You may have wondered why your medical scheme contributions keep going up. We'd like to give you some insight, a better understanding of how your money is being spent. Now everyone talks about CPI. Some of the elements go up more than others. For example, electricity, which has increased dramatically over the last year or so. Some of the other elements must have gone up by significantly less to have the average come out at the norm that we publish. Hospital input costs are not the average basket. Instead of clothes, housing and education, we have a different basket made up of medical equipment, pharmacy items, etc. In the second place we have nursing costs. We have an international shortage of nurses and this is no different in South Africa. We do not train enough nurses in the country for our need. Although hospitals are training nurses, we have a regulated quota that we are allowed to train. And although we're doing this, we still have a shortage of nurses in the country and because this is a scarce resource, there's continued upward pressure in the cost of employing nurses. Thirdly, we have buildings and maintenance. The average cost of a bed in a private hospital works out at about two and a half million rand per bed. And we obviously need to repay the interest on the capital and the bond, and we need to maintain the building in the condition that you see it. And as many of the items that we buy come from overseas, the effect of the rand dollar from time to time affects us significantly. The fourth element we want to talk about is pharmacy. Pharmacy makes up 30% of the bill that you receive from the hospital. It's important to break this into two boxes. The first is the portion which is reference to medicine. And this medicine is controlled by the Minister of Health through a process called single exit price. The second portion is for surgical products. And these are uncontrolled and are escalated by normal inflation and subject to rand dollar fluctuations. What is vital to understand is that all of these products are passed on to the member at the same price that we purchase them and therefore we make no profit at all on this portion of your account. At the same time, we pass on the benefit of new technology. For example, laparoscopic procedures are introduced which reduce the length of stay in hospital from three days to one day. At the same time, these products that we use are very expensive and increase the cost of the pharmacy basket on which we make no profit. We need to make a return on the shareholder capital. As we fund our capital and our business in the private sector from investors, it's important for us to generate a fair rate of return in order to attract further investment in the future. You'd have heard media reports that compare private and public hospital costs. It's important for us to highlight the differences between these two sectors. State hospitals have capital funded by Treasury out of tax and do not have to refund this amount. State hospitals are also allowed to employ professionals such as doctors, radiologists and pathologists and can therefore reduce the cost in this regard while private doctors have to cover practice overhead costs. State hospitals do not render VAT on their invoices nor do they pay tax in contrast to private hospitals. State hospitals also obtain medicine and surgical products at tender price about 40 to 50 percent lower than the private sector while prices in the private sector are regulated by government. The net effect of all of this is that there's a margin or a percentage above CPI. The private sector operates in a market with healthy competition and a balance of power. The four hospital groups negotiate with four large players who represent 75% of the entire medical scheme's membership. We have discussed price increases, now let's move on to utilisation increases. The medical scheme's pool of members, by law, have to accept everyone as a scheme member and must charge the same premium without discriminating on the basis of the health status of the individual. This is very different, for example, for car insurance where the individual's driving skills and car value are taken into consideration. As a result of these factors, the young and healthy exit the medical scheme until they need care. This means that the pool of remaining members are older and more prone to chronic conditions. For example, the CMS report currently released shows that the number of diabetics have increased by 80% in the last five years. Hospital records will also show that the average age of people going to hospital is older every year, the number of times that people are admitted is increasing every year, and the length of stay of each admission is growing longer. Consequently, if you look at the graph, you'll see that these elements are driving up the costs of the medical aid membership. So where to in the future? We are busy partnering with our doctors to identify cost-saving initiatives. 
This process is to ensure that affordable care is given to every one of the patients that attend our hospitals in the future. At the same time, we're working with the Competition Commission and taking part in the inquiry that they have launched to isolate and identify what are the reasons for the increase in the costs that we see in South Africa. We are also involved in the National Health Insurance Project which is being driven by the government to ensure and to understand how we as private hospitals can give access to a greater number of people in South Africa. In conclusion, we believe that private hospital industry is a national asset for this country. We are industry leaders in quality outcome transparency and as a good corporate citizen we are active in green projects Our prices have been benchmarked with the rest of the world and have compared very favorably. So the price of healthcare that you access here in South Africa is competitive in quality and value to any other place in the world. And you can have comfort that your money is being spent wisely.